Hello, uh, I am uh, Rui Cardoso, Senior Lecturer for Aerospace Engineering. So uh, this face you are seeing there is my face <laughs> and I'm going to um, um, introduce you to statics. So I'm going to, to show you some sample lectures and tutorials on uh, statics. So if you want for some reason to email me uh, with any query, you have my email address here. And uh, you also have these uh, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, things for Brunel, which you can try to follow. Um, so what I'm going to cover in these uh, sample lectures and tutorials is basically material for uh, your year one at Brunel. So I'm going to cover statics only. Of course, you are going to do many other things, but the main main topics I would like you to to focus is basically the, the first three vector analysis I'm going to give a very quick review of vector analysis with the basics and then I'm going to move to equilibrium of a particle where a lot of vector analysis is required and then I will introduce moment produced by a force vector so these are quite basic and but extremely important concepts that you need to know very well for uh, the remaining of your lectures. Uh, then I will move to uh, the equilibrium, uh, sorry, equivalent system force moment, where you will learn how to basically build an equivalent system that is uh, in the same equilibrium conditions as the original system. That will be very important for the topic that follows, which is equilibrium of rigid bodies, uh, which is the main, uh, the main uh, topic in statics. We, we, will study, okay, we will study many different types of supports. The, the bodies or the, the, the rigid bodies, they need to have supports. They cannot be levitating in the air. Uh, and then we are going to learn how to replace those supports with uh, forces, which are called reactions. And we are going to learn how to derive the equilibrium equations. Uh, basically, these equilibrium equations will, will um, make sure that your body is in, is in equilibrium. And then from those equilibrium equations, you can calculate many different unknowns. Uh, then we will talk a little bit about beams. Uh, we will derive the transverse shear force and bending moment diagrams for beams. So this is a kind of a introductory, uh, introductory uh, video I will have for all these sample lectures. Of course, uh, different lectures will have this same introductory video, but they will refer to different topics on this table of contents, if you want. Uh, another thing you can, if you are more curious, I, I, I have a YouTube channel which you can, if you are interested of course and curious, you can try to see what I had there. So I have a, a lot of lectures in that YouTube channel so you can search for that channel by googling, googling Ricardozo YouTube. Uh, I have lectures for more advanced years uh, so I recommend at this point you not to see those lectures. But um, uh, I also have some supporting material for uh, statics in year one there in YouTube channel. So I think it's a, it's a nice thing for you to, to see as well. I would like also to say that all the examples I will be doing in these lectures and tutorials, uh, not all of them, but uh, many of them were taken from these recommended books I have listed here in this slide. So engineering mechanics statics from Ebler or from vector mechanics for engineers statics from Beer and Johnson uh, from engineering mechanics statics from Marion Bolton and Craig and also from my own book stress analysis for lightweight structures a MATLAB oriented approach so all the examples you will see in the videos sometimes I refer which book I've taken the example sometimes I don't but these are the books that we uh, the, uh, sorry that I, I I follow so in case I forget to mention which book I took the example you have here the list of books uh, so you you know where they came from
Right, thank you. So we will move now uh, to the specific lecture. Uh, so my plan now, until, so we have more or less 30 minutes until the end of the lecture today. So I will introduce you the equilibrium of a particle, how to study that, what that means. If we have time to do one example, we will do it. If not, next Friday, we have one hour more, I will do that hour only solving examples with you about the equilibrium of a particle, okay? So in order to start the equilibrium of a particle, I need, so, we have, so far we have been talking about vectors in a very generic way. Now we need to talk <coughs> vectors as being a force. Now our vectors now are going to be forces, all right? So let's say, for example, I have here force one, and I have here force two, and I have here a particle, let's say particle A. So these two forces, they are two vectors, F1, F2, they are applied in this particle A. And what I want to do now is I want to obtain the resultant we call R. <coughs> I want to obtain the resultant of these two forces in particle A. Basically, this resultant is what? This resultant is I need to add F1 with F2 and the summation of these two forces will give me the total force in particle A, which we call the resultant, okay? So basically, if I add these two forces, what I'm doing is I am adding these two vectors, so I need to draw a parallel line to F2, a parallel line with F1, right? So in this intersection, I will have this vector, which I call vector R, which is the resultant, which basically is what? Is the summation of F1 with F2, right? So here, below, I am adding these two vectors. In the figure, I am adding these two vectors, F1 and F2, graphically by using the parallelogram rule. So this is equivalent. So if I will say that this system is equivalent to having a particle A here and having only the resultant. OK? So basically what I'm saying is, Original system with two forces, F1 and F2, is equivalent to this second system here below, <coughs> where we have the same particle A, and only one force applies to the particle, and that force, in order for these two systems to be equivalent, that force needs to be the resultant, or basically the summation of all the forces acting on the particle, all right? So we will have to do addition of vectors to get the result. Something we did today. Okay, so we have now a particle under the action of one single force, which is the resultant. How do I say that this particle is in equilibrium? So what I have to do is, I'm just going to write it here again. So for the equilibrium, <coughs> of this particle, what I'm going to say is that this resultant <coughs> needs to be equal to zero, all right? So this is quite trivial. If we have a particle, if we have the resultant of the forces in that particle, if we say that that, that resultant is equal to zero, then we have, that particle will be in equilibrium, right? Equilibrium means the balance of all the forces acting of 
at that particle, that balance is zero at the end. The particle stays there at equilibrium, does not move, right? For example, imagine the particle is this pen I have here. I put the pen here on the table. It's not moving now, it's in equilibrium, right? Why? Because you have, what are the forces acting on this pen? You have the force of gravity, right? And then you have the reaction of the table with the, on the pen. So the gravity will balance with the reaction of the table. So at the end, the summation of these two forces is equal to zero. And the pen is in equilibrium, it does not move. Imagine now, I have the pen here, I still have the, uh, the gravity force, right, applying on the pen. I'm going to release the pen, not in equilibrium, right? Summation or the resultant of force is not equal to zero. We have only the gravity acting on, on the particle, on the pen, and then it falls down. It's not in equilibrium, right? So in order for a particle to be in equilibrium, the resultant or the summation of all forces acting on the particle needs to be equal to zero. <coughs> OK? Now, imagine, for example, that I, I give you this R, a vector like this. 10, 0, 20. These are the components of, of this vector. So what happened in the past, many of your colleagues tend to say, because they see a 0 in a component, they tend to say the resultant is equal to zero, which is wrong. In order for the resultant to be equal to zero, we need to say this term, this component needs to be equal to zero, this component needs to be equal to zero, and this component also needs to be equal to zero. All of the components of the vector need to be zero, not only one, right? And why am I saying this? Because now you can see from our previous slide, for example, imagine I'm doing this example in two dimensions, right? So uh, I will have a coordinate system, x, y. This y is it's not very good. Let's do it again. We have a coordinate system. I'm going to say this resultant, so maybe I can delete this to get some space. I can say that this resultant is going to be the addition of vector F1, which will be F1x, component in the x direction, plus F1y plus vector F2, which will have a component in the x direction and a component in the y direction. So the result is going to be F1x plus F2x. And here we'll have F1y plus F1y. Sorry, f 2y. So basically what I'm doing is I am adding two vectors. Uh, the way we do that, add two vectors is by adding component by component of the vector. So adding component f1x with f2x, then I, I get the, the x component of my resultant then I add F1Y with F2Y, and then I get the Y component of my result, right? And then what I have to say is, <coughs> I'm struggling a bit with space here, so let me do this way, so maybe I can delete this, let me see. If I delete, I'm going to delete this figure and work only with the vectors. Maybe I can move this guy. Let me see if I can do it. Oh, I can. Very good. <coughs> All right. 
So now, what I'm going to say for the equilibrium, for the equilibrium, what I'm going to say is the resultant needs to be equal to zero, or taking our example, what I'm going to say is this vector here, which is the resultant, I'm just going to put it there. I'm going to say F1x plus F2x, F1y plus F2y. This is my resultant vector. It needs to be equal to zero so that my particle is in equilibrium. Right? That's what's going to happen. So what I'm saying here is that x component needs to be equal to zero and y component <coughs> needs to be equal to zero. We are doing in two dimensions. If I'm working in three dimensions, I will have here a third row components in z direction. They also will have to be equal to zero. And why am I doing this? Because in this case of two dimensions, you can see that basically we will obtain two equilibrium equations, not only one. What are these equilibrium equations? The first one is the components in the x direction of the resultant needs to be equal to zero. That gives me one equation. <coughs> Second equation is the components in the y direction of my resultant vector equal to zero. Two equations in two dimensions. If I am working in three dimensions, I will have three equations. And why is this important? This is important because, uh, sorry, this is important, and I'm going to show you why this is important in, the, in one example, OK? Right, so let's do one example now. I'm going to, <coughs> to pause to, to stop this video here, and we are going to do one example now, right? Just apply this. Sorry, I, f I, f I forgot to put rest. OK. So basically, like I was saying, this, these bars, they all have forces applied. And all these forces, these vectors, as you can see, they are converging to point O, right, in the figure. So basically, what I'm saying is that we can just take point O. I'm going to put it here. This is point O. And we can represent all the forces that we have apply on this point O. So we will start with this first one here, 8 kilonewtons, which is, so I'm going just to put this force over here. I'm going to say this is <coughs> 8 kilonewtons. I'm not writing now a vector uh, in top of this 8, because this 8 kilonewtons will give you the, the intensity or the value or the norm of this force and the, the direction is given by this arrow, right? So it is applied in point A, uh, O, sorry. What else do we have? We have this force now here, can you see? Which is a force T, it's a tension, T, which is unknown, I think, is unknown. But anyway, is a, a, a force that is also applied at point O. I'm going to represent it here, T. Okay, and this angle is 30 degrees, right? This is not very good. Let me try to. I need to zoom in a little bit. 30 degrees. This is better, right? OK, what else do we have? We have now this force F, this one, that I'm also going to include it here. F which is also unknown. We don't know the value of this force. And we have the last one that we have is this force of 5 kilonewtons, 
which is a force applied here, right? Five kilonewtons. Right? <coughs> and that's all we have. So in this particle, we make a little bit bigger. In this particle, we have all these forces acting on this particle. So what am I going to do now? Well, because I have vectors here, I need to have a coordinate system, first of all. So I'm going to say this is my x axis. This is my y axis. Right? And what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to obtain the components of all these vectors in this coordinate system. I'm going to add these vectors component by component. And then at the end, I'm going to say that resultant is going to be equal to zero to be in equilibrium. But before we continue, I would like to take this example to introduce you a very, very important thing in statics and dynamics and everything you are going to do from now on in uni, which is the free body diagram. I'm going to write it here, free body diagram. Many times we represent this by FBD. For example, in dynamics in term two, the lecture last year, they ask you explicitly to do the FBD. What is this free body diagram? Why is this so important? This is the secret to solve all these problems. If you understand this, that I did here in this example, you will have your life much easier. What I did was, I took point O from this example. This point O that you have here, I took this point and I isolated this point from the structure, right? And then, I built this, this scheme that you have here, right? So basically, I isolated this point O, and I represented all the forces that we have acting on this point O. Right? That's why we call this free body, because I, I isolated this point from the structure. I release it from the structure. I isolated it. So that's why we call this free body diagram. And then we need, of course, to represent the forces and have the coordinate system to describe the forces. And then just add all these forces together and say that summation equal to zero and problem is solved. This will be very important for the clearing of 3D rigid bodies, for trusses, metal of joints, metal of sections, beams, <coughs> everything you're going to do in year two. For dynamics, you will have to do this in dynamics because in statics we say summation of forces equal to zero. In dynamics you say summation of forces equal to mass times acceleration. That's the difference, right? So you will have to do these free body diagrams. If you know how to construct these free body diagrams, you will be very good in this model, trust me. <coughs> All right, so let's continue. So free body diagram, that's what we did. So what, I, what, I'm, what is the next step? What am I going to do now? I'm going to define all these vectors. So I'm going to start with this 8 kilonewton, OK? So this one here, I'm going to define this vector first, all right? This 8 kilonewton. So I'm going to use matricial notation. We have a component in the x direction only, which is equal to 8. <coughs> Agree with me? This is a 2D problem. So we have, this is my 8 kilonewton vector. I'm going to define now this f vector. <coughs> so this f vector, I'm going to include it here now, is the next step. So I'm going to add because I need to add all the vectors to get the resultant. So how do I obtain this f vector? Well, this f vector, if you look carefully, is aligned with my y direction. So I have only component in the y direction. And I can say then the x is 0, 
y direction I get f because it is an unknown. I don't know the value of this f. <laughs> Next vector I'm going to consider in the analysis is this five kilonewton here. I'm going to work this five kilonewton vector now. <coughs> All right? So I'm going to decompose this five kilonewton vector in x and y direction. Let's start with the x direction. How do I decompose this? So I forgot to include here this angle is 45 degrees, right? This is 45 degrees. <coughs> How do I obtain the x component of this vector? I'm going to use the red color here. So the, my x component is going to be this one, right? And I can say that this component here is, you tell me, what do you think? Five cos 45. Five cos 45, very good, right? What about the y component? The same. Yeah, so this y component <coughs> is going to be also five cosine or sine 45 is the same thing. So let's put here sine. Right? And now I just need to, to take these components in red color that I just draw there and include them here, right? So I'm going to say, starting with the component in the x direction, as you said, is five cosine 45. And the component in the y direction, now a very important thing, what do you think it needs to be? Plus 5 sine 45 or minus 5 sine 45? Minus. Minus, very good. Look, <coughs> this vector, the component, this component here in red, this component, the vertical component, it has the opposite direction with my y-axis. So for that reason, it needs to be minus. So I'm going to put here minus 5 sine 45 degrees. OK? Everybody understand? Yes? Um, see, um, was A. Put an A <coughs> as well. No, for the first one, the 8 kilonewtons. Yeah. yeah, look, the 8 kilonewtons, this one, the force has the same direction as x. <coughs> when it has the same direction as the coordinate axis, it, it needs to be a plus. When it has the opposite to the coordinate axis is a minus, all right? OK? All right, so we need, we need now to do our, the, the, the last vector we have to, to decompose is vector t. So I will try to delete this bit here. Let's see if I can. Otherwise, it becomes very confusing. OK? So we need now to decompose this vector t. So I'm going to use now the black color. We do in a similar way. So we will have to draw these parallel lines to the axis. So this one, this black one, is going to be my x component. And this one is going to be my y component. Both of these two components are opposite with the coordinate axis, right? So they need to be both negative. OK? You all agree with me? So this component here is going to be, you tell me, what is the norm of this horizontal component? T cos 30. T cos 30. Very good. So T cos 30 degrees is this component. Now this one here, you tell me now, T sine 30, very good. T sine 30. So don't forget this, uh, is, this is the length or the intensity of these components or the norm of these components. Now we need to put this, we need to add this to our vector, right? So starting with the horizontal one, starting with this one, 
this component is opposite with x, so it needs to be a minus, right? So I will have minus t cos 30 degrees. <coughs> and then, now this one, the vertical component, is also opposite with my y-axis, so it needs to be a minus as well. So it's going to be minus t sine 30 degrees, right? You all agree with me? And that's all we have, right? So if I add all these <coughs> vectors together, I will have the resultant of the forces in this particle O, and then I will have to say this result needs to be equal to zero. So this needs to be equal to zero, zero. All right? Okay, so. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add all the components. No, sorry. I'm going to add, for example, for the x components, I'm going to add all of the x components of all vectors together. So I, I'm going to build my system of equations, right? So let's start with, let's start with this x components. So I'm going to take these x components and say, so I will have what? I will have 8 plus 5 cosine of 45 degrees minus t cosine of 30 degrees needs to be equal to zero, right? One equation. One equilibrium equation. Second equilibrium equation is if I now look at the y components, these ones here, and just write them down. So we get f minus 5 sine of 45 degrees minus t sine of 30 degrees equal to 0. All right? And look at this now. We have what? We have here a system of equations. Two equations for two unknowns, right? What are the unknowns? T and F. Two unknowns, two equations, we just solve this system of equations. We don't need to solve it here. It's quite uh, basic. We solve this system of equations, and then we obtain the value of force T and the value of force F in this structure. That guarantees that my particle O is in equilibrium. All right? You see how it works? So. The idea, so we are basically finishing um, the idea of uh, this uh, lecture today was to introduce you with vectors. I want you to, to be very careful with vectors. It's very important to understand very, very well vectors. How to decompose a vector, to get the components, do the internal products, external or cross products, add vectors together, get the resultant of the, the forces, and then the equilibrium equation for a particle is quite, quite easy, right? Okay, so next Friday, we are going to do only examples of equilibrium of particle, okay? So I hope you enjoyed, see you next Friday then.